three years, but you know what? It was the easiest way, but I knew if they called me by my full name, I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know yeah, how it that. feels. I know how that feels. But take it away. Well, Georgie, let's let's give a little quick, you know, like we do for everybody. Georgie is part of Exceptional Heroes. We're going to put their social media handles also for you to go follow. They got a TikTok also. I just, I just, want to say. <laughs> it's just a fun one. Yeah, it's just a fun one. So they're going to be discussing as a parent how to protect things of that nature. So I would just give it to y'all, you know. Thank you. I have a PowerPoint if I could, it kind of keeps me on point. Does um, one of you pull it up or do I pull it up or how does it? Oh, I lost you. Oh, sorry. I, um, Michelle, is it possible? Can you change Georgie to become host so that Georgie can just present us with some gems today? Uh, yes, you are host now. All right. Okay. Later. We'll see y'all. Thank you. Bye. See you, everybody. So I put together a small presentation. Um, uh, this is pretty much, um, this is the first time publicly for me to come out, uh, you know, since mom Savannah came home um, from the attack as a parent. And so let me introduce myself. My name is Georgie Palafox. I'm co-founders with my daughter and she's sitting here right now in support of me um, of Exceptional Heroes. Uh, Exceptional Heroes was founded farther down the line after the attack. And so um, I learned of Safe Bay um, as one of the resources um, when my daughter first came home as I was researching. So um, let me just tell you a brief overview of who Exceptional Heroes is. And uh, Exceptional Heroes um, was a platform that uh, Savannah, my daughter, established um, a few months after coming home during her healing process. And she established it to bring awareness to not just as a survivor, but she to bring awareness to mental illness, um, disabilities, uh, special needs, uh, invisible disabilities, um, and some other areas um, within those communities that she supported um, before the attack and that she was on that path uh, when she was going to college and um, that she has continued since then. And it has been an intricate part of her healing. It has been an intricate, intricate part of my healing as well in our families. Um, so I'll get started. Um, I call this the eye of the storm. And the reason why I call it the eye of the storm is because it was something that I learned um, when, and I'll, I'll kind of go into it, when we, when I learned of what happened to Savannah, I felt like um, a hurricane had hit us. Um, you know, we went from a normal, typical day to um, the world was just, it was, I was in the middle of a tornado, of a hurricane, of any natural disaster. That's what it felt like. Um, and I, um, to say uh, what a hurricane is, what the eye is, the eye is the safest part of the hurricane. And, um, and so our hurricane, which I call Hurricane Y, happened on April 28th, 2018. And so on that day was when I found out that Savannah had come forward to her father and I that she had been attacked. And so before that warning signs, um, cause she came up after it uh, because we learned later that she was in crisis mode in survival mode. Um, she hadn't even still hadn't um, identified what had happened because it was so severe and so traumatic. Um, I had visited Savannah um, a few weeks prior at her college in Colorado um, we live in Arizona. I had visited her college and um, I was um, squatting in her dorm room because we're, we're my girls and I, I have two daughters, we're um, definitely best friends. And so I wanted to visit her and I had a hotel room and she's like, what are you doing? You got to stay with me. Let's just like bunk together. And, um, and when we were there, I started seeing like, I saw some notes about from professors saying that she was behind and that wasn't like her. I started seeing um, 
uh, papers and she had an excuse for all of them. And um, because Savannah was very uh, transparent um, kid and um, I never problematic, I was like, okay, yeah, then yeah, something's up with the professors or idiots and didn't think nothing of it. Um, then I came home and um, I was um, on that day, uh, that afternoon, I was looking at, um, I got an email, a really strange email about financial aid. And so I jumped on and um, I had parent rights to see her grades. And I'm like, it showed like she had not even attended that sem semester, but I was like, yes, yeah, she did because I was there um, just a couple weeks before and she was leaving to class and coming home or coming back to the dorm. And so I called her and, um, you know, she had, you know, all of the, these um, stories that she was giving me. And I, um, we ended up getting into a large argument. And I, I look back at this day and I think to myself, um, I wish, I wish it was true that those grades were because um, she was just overwhelmed. It wasn't what actually happened. And, um, so I ended up hanging up the phone with her and, you know, it's still, she was sticking with the, the grades, but then she ended up calling her dad uh, instantly afterwards and telling him, dad, I, I'd been raped. And he was on his way home and he called me. And when he called me and those words came out on the phone, it was surreal. Um, you know, I happened to be at my mom and dad's cause they live up the street from us and I heard it, but I didn't hear it because I couldn't believe like what he was saying. Um, it couldn't be my daughter, you know, um, how could this happen? Um, because, you know, we like, you know, at the time we were very religious and we're like, no, like, you know, there's, um, angels, right. They sort of protect her. Um, no, I, I am a survivor of child abuse from a family member when I was younger. So if it happened to me and then my husband's a survivor of, of a traumatic childhood as well of, of abuse, no, it couldn't because it happened to the two of us. So we were gonna be freed of it ever happening to our kids because it happened to us. Um, like a million things going through my head and, and I'm a solution solver and I'm a uh, type A personality. And so it's like, I. I have a, a reasoning for everything. I can figure it out. And then, um, so I, I couldn't even hear my husband anymore. I needed to call Savannah. And when she told me, um, when some people say that they, um, they needed to hear this, to believe, I instantly believe it to her. I instantly knew. Um, and I couldn't even, immediately I went into, um, like I said, we were in the middle of a tornado. I assess the situation or the hurricane, I assess the situation and I thought, how do I get her to safety? The safest part is the center of this hurricane. And um, I didn't think of what was happening to me. I, my mom was crying, my dad's crying. My husband has now walked into the house and he looks like he's aged decades. But I'm still not contemplating. My sister who lives literally, we're tight knit family, lives across the street from my parents. She comes and she's um, hysterical crying. And I'm still, I'm on the phone with the airline. I'm getting my daughter home. I'm getting her on a plane. I'm finding out who's gonna, the Uber that's gonna pick her up and get and, and getting her bags. And what do I need to, you know, how soon is the flight? Is it better for me to go out there? And, and I'm in survival mode. I'm still not assessing the situation. Um, I'm I'm assessing like how quickly can I pick her up virtually, um, you know, from thousands of miles away and get her here. I need her get her here. I need her in my arms, in my home. I need her here. And um, and then I made errors as that as that went um, as Hurricane Y, you know, because again I have all these things I'm doing, but I'm also hearing why Savannah, you know, she works, you know, she's getting her degree in child psychology with, um, for special needs. Um, why Savannah, you know, she was born with a hearing impairment, which led to a learning disability, which they told her that she would never be able to read at a, um, uh, 
sixth grade reading level by the time she graduated, but yet through perseverance, through challenges, through tutoring, through um, less playtime and more studying, she graduated with honors with her college, with her associate's degree and honors in high school. So, you know, she sacrificed a lot. So why Savannah? Um, why Savannah? She developed a seizure disorder at 16 and um, back and forth with, with um, debilitating seizures. How, what more, why, why, why? And, um, as why is going on, I'm still in survival. It's no time for the parent. It's no time for Georgie. Cause I mean, you know, what, where, what are you upset about Georgie? You know, you didn't have to care of your daughter. It's worse. What happened to her? You don't have time to think about you. And so that's what, what the next several months was like. Um, from the moment that she landed, um, even sitting there at the airport, I remember staring and um, having to figure out too, I had a 16 year old um, who was very sheltered. Like I said, we were very religious at the time. And so very sheltered girls. Um, Savannah hadn't even had a boyfriend. Mackenzie hadn't even had a boyfriend. And, um, you know, they were FFA girls, you know, they showed rabbits and they um, volunteered at church. And um, so this was like, what? And um, so how do I, how's my 16 year old doing? Am I, am I paying attention to her? How do I pay attention to Savannah? How do I take care of Savannah? Um, Roman's okay. That's my husband. You know, everything's good. Um, just fix, you know, everything's good with you, Georgie. Just keep fixing the situation for Savannah. And that's what I did. And I kept operating like that, operating like that, operating like that. And every time I wanted to cry, every time I wanted to break, um, I took a breath and held it together because I didn't have time. That's what I kept telling myself. You don't have time. And I remember one, one of the days, um, about a, two months um, into, and I'll just, I don't know if you could see the screen. Um, I'll go to the next slide. Two months into, uh, you know, trying to find a therapist out here in Arizona, there is not a lot of help. Um, there is, it is a very, very um, unhealthy conservative state. They don't have resources for uh, survivors. They don't have resources for um, uh, trauma, uh, crisis, mental health, mental illness, and. Um, so I was Googling everything. And so once the storm happened, it was the aftermath. Where do I get started? Because she started experiencing PTSD. I didn't even know what that was. Um, I knew what that was when it, when it came to like military, um, you hear about it, you learn about it, but not as a, not a survivor. Um, I didn't even know for my own self because I didn't even come clean with my own personal story until I was um, my mid thirties. It was the first time I ever told my, my parents um, and actually probably my late thirties, I would say. And, um, and I'm 45, I'll be 46. And the only one that knew was my husband. And so, you know, it was like, I didn't even know if I had ever went through that um, because I was so used to um, just pushing down the clown in the, in the little box, you know, never um, letting it spring up. And if it sprang back up, I put it down. So I was researching and I found um, an organization called EROC and they were godsend. Um, Mia Newell, I will never forget that young girl. Um, she helped me with Savannah. She set up dozens of appointments for us, phone calls, um, actual meetings, and we would go and, um, you know, immediately they would start asking Savannah very um, trauma triggering questions. And I'm like, aren't you a psychologist? Didn't you go to school? What is wrong with you? And because it was, you know, it, they immediately put like, you know, blame on her. Like, you know, why didn't you tell your parents immediately? Um, why did you shower? Um, why don't you like the police officer that your mom called? Um, why are you, it, it was a lot of why, why, why stop. I, I literally finally stood up and was like, we're out. We're done. 
I'm going to read every freaking book out there because Arizona, we, there was nobody here and I'm going to learn how to be trauma informed and trauma aware. And I'm going to learn about PTSD for a survivor and I'm going to learn all. So I'm going to have to put that mom hat on, keep the wife hat on. Now I want to, I need to be a therapist and then I'm going to need to be a mental health coach. And I was just piling it on. And, um, when I did have a, a, a meltdown, I had went to my parents. I remember driving back home thinking, are you kidding? Your daughter has gone through something that no one should ever have to go through of any age, of any sexuality, any race, ever. And you're crying to your parents. You should have been home. And I, I never gave myself a break, you know, at the time, at the time. Until one day, a friend of mine, I traveled a lot for work, um, called me up out of the blue and he bonded with Savannah instantly because a, a few times when I would travel, I would have the um, ability to bring my kids. Um, I, I was in the mortgage industry and, and I think I was tough too because it was predominantly male. I'd been in it for you know over 15 years, um, had to deal with a lot of Wall Street asses, I'm sorry, um, guys. And... Um, so I learned to be tough. And so, you know, one of them bonded, you know, I, he was a, a, like a, a brother and he immediately introduced us to a um, therapist that he knew very well because he worked with uh, the Chibok girls that were an organization that worked with the Chibok girls were um, a, a group of girls from Nigeria that were captured into um, slug slavery. And um, the head therapist, uh, Sumari Pabara was the therapist. And she also was a part of the Elizabeth Smart camp. And so he said, would you like to talk with her? And well, in my head, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I'm just like, just this, we're just this little family from Arizona. She can even talk to us. And she, she did. And um, she has become family. She's in fact on our board. Savannah and her do a lot of now um, trauma-informed, trauma-aware classes. But when she first started with us, um, you know, she gave me everything that I needed for Savannah. And one day she asked me, have you cried? Have you taken a moment and, um, and, and interrupt me, you guys, if you have any questions, I, I just tend to keep going. Um, and I you know, told her, how can I, what if I start crying and I can't stop? Um, you know, what do you mean care for me? How do you want me to care for me? I got to care for her. And she kept saying, you're in a plane, Georgie, you're going down and you're putting this you know, you know, this oxygen on your daughter as you're suffocating yourself and you're going to pass out. And then if you can't help her, then both of you are going to go down and both of you are going to lose oxygen. It took me a while for me to understand that and not feel guilt for having me days, me moments. Um, because as I saw Savannah having bits of good days or not days, good moments at the time, you know, this is, we're now probably about six months into it, um, six, eight months into it. You know, I was, and, and I already had McKinsey now I'm like, McKinsey got to get some therapy, you know, and, um, you know, my husband, you know, I'm like, you're taking care of you right on you on mentally. And, um, I was making sure everybody else, you know, cause I'm like, I'm strong, you know, hey. and, um, you know, when she said me, I finally felt like, yeah, I, I need a me. Um, I don't know what it is I need, but I know I need to breathe. I'm holding my breath and I'm afraid to let go. And so at that moment, um, we started to rebuild. We started rebuilding from Hurricane Y. I stopped asking why. It wasn't healthy for me to ask why. Because you know what, Savannah was asking why and I couldn't give her an answer. And so all I could give her was support. And so Savannah and I developed um, piece of peace. Let's just find one piece of peace every moment or every day or in that moment or in that day that we could help each other and Again, like I said, my kids are my best friends. Um, 
you know, that they're my life, the four of us, um, uh, we have a, a very unique bond. Um, you know, the kids love my anniversary because, um, it means they get to go somewhere fancy with us, uh, cause I do everything with my kids. And so, you know, we found it, it, it was either, you know, it was even, you know, in things like playing with our dogs, um, you know, Savannah has, um, therapy animals that she takes to these special needs camps. And so, um, you know, we have a, a very, um, spoiled mini pot belly pig. And so it was sitting outside with this mazel and, you know, uh, getting her mad with putting water on her and it was pieces of peace. And I used to feel at the time before that guilty. I'm like, oh my God, I should be researching more. I should be talking more with Somi. Um, we should be more because as a parent of a survivor, you get a lot of unsolicited um, advice, a lot. And these are from people that are not parents of survivors that have never been through um, something as traumatic or they compare their trauma with yours. There's no comparison. You don't need to compare traumas. Trauma is trauma. You've gone through something in your home. Don't compare it. Let's support each other. What do you need? You need just to listen? Want a cup of coffee? You want to cry? Want to get a cocktail? What do you need? Because I'm here. And I was at the time getting more advice. You know, Savannah should read Elizabeth Smart's book. You should read it. Um, Savannah needs to do this. Savannah should do this. You should do this. You need to put her back in school, get her back over there. The faster she goes, the better she's going to be. Mom, you need to just show her what strength is. You got, and it was all of this noise. And I finally was sharing, you know, opening up with Somi about that. When, when Savannah would have therapy at the beginning, she would want me in there. And, um, you know, because sometimes in her PTSD episodes, she, um, it would go from a PTSD and then her seizures started to get very worse and violent and where it would knock her unconscious. And so she wouldn't remember some of this. And so I needed to walk Somi through it. And some of the times Somi was on camera with us and she'd be on hours, hours. I mean, I think one time she was on for 10 hours with us because she lives in New York and we're out here. And so, you know, she was like, what are these questions? You need to erase all of this. We develop around you and your normal and what works for you and what works for Savannah and you pushing her to go in, returning to college is going to re-traumatize her. She's not ready for that. She will say when she's ready, um, you know, continue to support her with therapy. Stop calling it therapy. Call it conversation with her friend, Somi. Call it support. Call it, um, what do you guys call it now? just anything. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just like, I'm going to call Somi, you know, kind of thing. And, um, so we started to work on that. That's when I started working on me and, and Somi started teaching me how to take care of me to take care of Savannah. And then Savannah, as she started going more and more in therapy and reading and helping others and getting involved in, um, with other survivors, she started teaching me how to take care of me too. Um, and it was really, it was um, unusual, but it was refreshing. Um, I started learning things like um, mental health days, um, mental, you know, uh, taking care of me, get removing myself from a stressful activity because um, I could be a workaholic. Um, when I'm watching TV, turn off my phone. Uh, don't be looking at emails while I'm watching, just sit there and enjoy yourself, watch Desperate Housewives and think about nothing. Um, you know, it was uh, taking care of um, even my health, um, you know, during that event, because I had suppressed so much, I had developed what was called, um, what is called um, autonomic dysfunction, which is I have an autoimmune disease because of repressing for so long, even it, it steered from repressing what happened to me as a child and then with Savannah, I ended, ended up damaging my nervous system, which I didn't realize that stress can damage your body. Um, I gained, still have it, uh, gained, um, you know, about 45 pounds. Um, and I don't know how a vegan can gain 45 pounds, but you can. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I started learning about health days and uh, wellness days and 
taking care of me. And even if it's walking around target for two hours and just walking out with Q-tips, it was just walking around. Um, you know, I learned how to uh, detox myself and, and still not be guilty if I wanted to splurge, you know, on, you know, you know, I like, you know, vegan, um, ice cream and things like that. And there's vegan donuts. There's all the kinds of stuff like that, that has sugars in it. And I would not feel guilty about that. Um, it took about a year for me to not feel guilty about connecting with my husband on an intimate level. Um, cause I used to think, how can I do that? Because something violent happened to my daughter that took away from her knowing what healthy love is. And so how can I do that? And I, it took about a year of therapy, um, to learn that it's okay. Um, you know, my husband's my best friend. I've been with him since I was 16 years old and we've been married for um, going on 20, going to be 25 years. And so, you know, it was, you know, con reconnecting with him. Um, Cause I felt like I was just, you know, I felt like there was everyone around to take care of, but I, I felt like I was on my own. And, um, and then just learning to be proud of myself um, because if I'm not the best of me, how can I be the best for her? And so um, I just started working with her. Savannah developed a product and she said, hey, mom, and COVID happened and um, said, mom, you know, you're laid off. Why don't we go forward with this? Um, and so that's what we've been doing. And we've been getting more involved in panels such as this and um, teaching about also trauma and starting to educate and um, hoping to educate and bring more awareness here to Arizona and other states that are very judgmental. So does anybody have any questions? Can you tell us more about the wellness days? Yeah, so, um, you know, it doesn't have to be every single day. Um, and I don't even know how to stop screen sharing so I could just kind of see where you guys are all. Um, still learning all of this technology. Um, what I do on, on wellness days is, um, you know, I've go outside, get some vitamin D, even if it's, you know, just walking to get the mail, walk around the block. Um, you know, if you're not a big, uh, walker, um, I am definitely not a big exercise person, but I do love to dance. And, um, you know, I grew up in the, um, eighties. So, throwing, you know, all of these um, new TikTok dances. Yes, I do those. And so I have a blast with that and I get my sweat up and get my energy going and I have a good time with the girls. Um, I feel music as therapy. Um, you know, we're, we don't, you know, go around playing, you know, like this very soft, I mean, we throw on, um, you know, Iggy and Cardi B and we blast it and we dance to it and, um, we have a good time and, you know, it again, um, kind of, you know, you, when you're stressed out, you induce the cortisol in you creating more and more, and it just heightens the stress. And so if you, you know, do this exercise, you know, it, it, it gives you some of those happy endorphins and, you know, it starts to lessen the stress and, um, promote a little bit more or a lot more, I say positivity. And so, you know, we do that. Um, I go to the dog park um, with the dogs. We do a lot of things with our dogs that gets us. So, you know, it's just a lot of wellness grounding. I've learned about grounding. I don't know if any of you know what grounding is, but it's um, what do you see? What do you feel? What do you hear? What do you taste? And um, what do you see? And so for that, um, I will put on um, sometimes I'll just put on meditation bells. Um, you know, I'm very hyper, so I could probably do about five minutes of just stillness. Um, but I'll put it on and I'll do controlled breathing because we breathe sometimes inappropriately. And so it causes us to have like hyperactivity or it causes stress and because we'll hold our breath. And so I, you know, I'll do my breathe in four out eight with nice music going on. And um, I just concentrate for five minutes on my breathing, which kind of um, grounds me from where I was. And um, I, you know, I love essential oils. So I do it with essential oils. Um, 
candles. I love candles. And so just something to create a mood of calm for at least five minutes. And um, it's amazing what it does. Um, and then just, just things like that is what I, a part of my self-care. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. Anyone else? What I will say as a parent um, is um, learn to listen to your, um, your child. And um, if I have, if there's more um, survivors and, and children in there um, and your parent is a part of your healing process or your support group, um, learn to communicate with them too. Um, you know, we, um, we may seem that we have it all together. We know everything, but we don't because we're reading from, you know, Dr. Google. Um, and that's not the best because we need to learn from you and what works for you. And maybe at that moment, you know, when you're going through something and you, you know, mom thinks or dad thinks like, Hey, well then, you know what, let's do this. We're going to take you out. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And you're like, okay, well, I guess that's what we're doing, but that's not what you want. All you want to do is just veg and not think and sit. Be open because we want, we want you to feel the best of you. We want to support you. We want you to, to um, start thriving. Um, and, um, you know, Somi and Savannah say um, from trauma to transformation, we want to support your transformation. And so in order to do that, we need to know what works for you in that transformation. And that's what we want to do to support you. Um, my mom's on, so I was wondering if my mom wanted to say anything. She just popped on. Um, Cause for my mother, it was very difficult as well. Um, she, uh, you know, here she is, is um, just newly on hearing about what happened to her daughter just a few years back and now having a granddaughter, um, having something so traumatic like that happened. Um, it, it was a lot. Um, it, a lot has changed in our lives, but um, we have found a new normal. You know, um, we have learned too that you can't, um, there are certain things you can't go back to, but there is things that you can um, redesign and reform that works for you and where you're at in your healing. And there's, you're always healing, you're always transforming, you're always getting better um, and stronger. I mean, I'm amazed today, just listening to all of these panels and listening to all of you um, on here that either are a volunteer or also a volunteer and a survivor, or you've created your own platforms and social medias. Um, I, I, I commend you, I, I, I'm honored to be in the same, um, realm as you right now because of the fact that you've taken something and you have flipped it to something positive in your life to or to do something positive I, I take that back because you know you've you've made something positive for it because um that's a part of helping others to know that you know you will smile again um you will see you know, you will laugh again and an uncontrollable belly laugh again. Um, you will have days that will be better. It just takes time. You know, um, we've learned that for us, it's, you know, you know, going on two years, but, um, you know, there's days it feels like it was day one. And then there's times where it, it feels like it's been forever and we just keep going and we keep finding the piece of the peace in every day. Um, trying to think of anything else that I have on my, um, on my deck. I think I kind of covered anything. Is there any, anything else anyone has? I'm going to look, let's see. Not a question, just as a survivor for taking the time to share a story. Thank you. Yes, we hope I'm reading some of the comments. We definitely want to bring change to Arizona. Um, I am grateful for organizations um, that I, even the ones that I've um, learned about today, because like I said, if it wasn't for EROC, 
um, and then even connecting with rain. Um, we want to have known of some of the virtual um, ones, but we definitely need more change out here in, in um, you know, in Arizona, um, you know, where they're not so liberal and, you know, that's where you need to like take, don't be judgmental. Everyone has a story, everyone has a hurt and everyone needs to be um, believed and supported and loved unconditionally. Uh, any, anything else? I'm trying to look at the comments. Um, that's all I have. I mean, I know that there's some more minutes, um, you know, if you have anything, any questions, um, you know, please um, feel free. Is there, you know, I don't know what else to share right now. Maybe if you're open to it, we can try one of those grounding exercises you told us about. Yeah, that'd be great. So to kind of give you an idea and, and um, to know, I'll give you the, the one that's worked for Savannah um, is it is on Amazon Music and iTunes. It's called Two Bells and it's um, coherent breathing. And basically it's where um, when the bell goes in a small, um, a small like bell sound, it's a Tibetan bell. You breathe in and you breathe in four counts and then you hold it just for a second and you breathe out four. One, three, four. And when you're in a trauma episode or a PTSD, the four in, four out brings um, almost instant um, calmness to your blood pressure in your body. But for wellness, which is different. So this is trauma breathing, but if it, for maintenance, a four in and eight out. So you just breathe in the four seconds and then we'll count in and then breathe out the eight instantly. And breathing out the eight is hard because the reason why it's hard is you tend to want to, and the reason why we say grounding and controlled breathing is because we're trying to bring your blood pressure down. And, you know, the younger generations, you know, you're all breathing always. I mean, come on, you have to keep up with TikTok. And so, um, but, you know, proper breathing is what helps balance your body, which balances your mood. And doing that too is creating your mood, you know. Um, you know, Savannah for Savannah, like she's not, you know, she doesn't do a bunch of candles like me and Ken's does, but, you know, she does it with her animals. Um, you know, her animals have learned what deep pressure therapy is, um, you know, for a survivor, Savannah has even taught, um, you want to kind of give an example, you know, or say about deep pressure therapy for trauma survivors, what's different? Uh, yeah, so, um, well, because I do it with my um, animals, deep pressure therapy works well on your thighs or on your chest, but being a survivor, sometimes that's not possible. So just finding the right place. So my service dog, she knows that if she's, because I first teach them on my thighs, which I'm okay with, but she knows if my anxiety goes up, she has to move to my calves because if I need to, I can stand up faster, but she's still giving the, the um, deep pressure therapy to make sure you're grounded because you're feeling this heavy dog on you um, while, so that you know that you're home, you are still getting your blood flowing and certain things like that. Um, same thing with the weighted blankets, except the weighted blankets didn't work for me and added more trauma. And then for me, you know, when we've done deep pressure therapy, um, I don't like anything holding me down, but I remembered for that. I used to, when I used to hold my kids and they were big kids, they were nine pounds. Um, and so I would feel calm when they were on my chest because when they were on my chest, um, I used to think to myself, if I have anxiety trying to calm this baby down as a new mom, then I'm going to transfer it to them. And so what I do is if I'm holding one of our animals, I will calm my body down because I don't want to transfer and make the animal to be anxious. And it's psychological, but it's positive psychology. And because it's causing me to calm myself down, learn to breathe. So I'm getting a little bit of the deep pressure therapy and I'm also getting um, doing my, my coherent breathing or my um, controlled breathing. 
And there's also light pressure therapy. So my dog also knows how to put her head on me instead of her whole body. Uh, still same effect, just it probably, um, it's just lighter weight. And hydration. Um, I learned from Somi um, because of, you know, working with the Chibot girls that um, a lot of times too, uh, PTSD and triggered events could be d- due to your body, um, its um, need for electrolytes and nutrients and water. So she says water is a very powerful, powerful element. And so to drink a lot of water and, and at first her and I were like, you know, when she was, when we first met her and she's telling us about water, we're like, water. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, um, as we started seeing positive results, as we started learning more, cause I'm a researcher, it, it worked, you know, hydrating ourselves. And, and then again, just taking care of, of us, you know, Savannah's really good at just telling me like, you know what, I need a moment, you know, and sometimes she'll say, I need a moment. So it's like, I need a moment. And, you know, knowing like, okay, that's like, she needed it yesterday. So let's give it to her and same for her. She'll, and a lot of times I am still learning to say it out loud. And so she'll say, mommy, you, you need to shut, shut off because you've been doing, because as you all know, you're in a field that's a constant reminder of what has happened to you because you're helping others. And so where some people go on to a different career, they go back to being, you know, whatever they are um, in, in, you know, in a field, a a veterinarian, I don't know, utility worker, a driver for Amazon, but, you know, working in this field, you need to stay healthy for you in your mind, in your body, in your soul, because it's beyond, it's not just the physical, it's everything. It goes deep down into the heart. You know, it's, it's even knowing like, you know what, today, just to say, you know what, I'm loved. And if I'm not, if, if it's not someone, I know I love me because I am trying to be the best of me for someone else. Um, you know, and just saying that out loud, um, just to tell yourself it's okay today. It's okay to be just to have a binge day. You need a me moment. Thank you so much for sharing guys. I actually have a Tibetan bowl if you want to do a little breathing exercise together. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. I love those. All right. So it was breathe in for four seconds and then breathe out for eight seconds. Yes. That is maintenance. Yeah. I love essential oils. So I got my little humidifier, I mean, oil diffuser. So I'll let you know something, a little secret too, that um, if sa- saffron is actually a natural like Xanax, it calms you down instantly instead of something that is, you know, uh, taking a drug. We Savannah has practiced it. If you take a little bit of saffron, put a drop on your tongue, it immediately will calm you down. Um, Saf- saffron, yes. And it's in an oil form. So, um, oh yes, you have one of our favorite bowls. Yes. <laughs> so okay. if you, okay. Oh going to ring the bowl and as i ring the bowl we're going to breathe in for four seconds yes up and then we're going to breathe out for eight seconds and i'm gonna ring it again yes okay Very good. Yeah. And I encourage you to check out, you know, some of the bell sounds that they have on Amazon too. If you don't have your own Tibetan bell, um, they have some beautiful sounds. Um, what has worked for us is he's a friend of ours, Steve Elliott. He, he established that sound. Um, we actually established our own sound that we'll be um, putting on our website soon um, that um, we are very excited. And it's a four, eight, um, with the sound that Savannah and I and, the, and came up with and, and got um, uh, backed and confirmed by our therapist. And so it's, it's, it's great. So, you know, just keep taking care of yourselves, guys, um, gals, um, everyone, um, and know that, you know, um, 
we're all here from each other and we love you. And our DMs, our DMs are always open. Savannah is very good at that. Um, if you ever need um, just to talk to someone, um, whether it be chat or jumping on a Zoom, we always make ourselves available um, for anyone, um, mothers, fathers, grandparents, um, survivors, um, or just someone that is even um, uh, a sister or brother or friend that doesn't, that has a, knows a survivor and they don't know how to help them. You know, we're there, we're here for you to provide you resources. Uh, we're not experts, we're just people that have been through the storm and that we um, are educating ourselves along with you and bringing our resources and the people that we've partnered with, uh, such, such as Samari and other organizations, um, Iraq and RAIN and all of these resources, Safe Bay, um, reach out to them because there's always help. Well, I want to say thank you once again for coming. Safe Bay appreciates you for coming here and presenting and giving us some gems. Um, I hope everyone has figured out, you know, some, some gems that they'll take with them within their family. I know for me, I wrote down some things to bring back to my family. Um, also, for everyone, I put down the links to their Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok. So be sure, whichever social media you use, follow it get some more gems um contact them uh i think i forgot to put the email no oh wait yes i did forget to put the email so i'm gonna put the email down so y'all can email them also it was yes. a pleasure having you georgie just to let you know that savannah and somi will be doing weekly a mental wellness um and it's going to be an open forum for people that they could even ask questions it's going to be live on instagram every week but it's um trauma-informed and trauma-aware, which people don't know of, and then several other sub subjects. And it's every Thursday. This Thursday coming up is going to be a Q&A to ask them anything. So you have a, a world-renowned international therapist that you can ask any questions. She is a trauma therapist. Um, she's our friend. She's our therapist. She's our family. And then you have Savannah, who, you know, Savannah has been using her platform to tell her story and um, and what she's learned has worked and not worked for her. And, and it's just a safe environment and they're very kooky and, and laughing all the time. And so it's just very warm and you could tell that they, they totally love each other. And so. Is this seven o'clock Pacific standard time or seven o'clock Eastern standard time? So Somi has it on. So what time is it next week? It's one her time. Her time. So it's one Eastern time. No. no, sorry. You know what we'll do is- One our time, three her time. Okay, yep, yeah, there we go. So it's one o'clock mountain, Arizona, three o'clock Eastern, cause she's in New York. And, and it's in our Instagram, the right time zones. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that answered your question. Um, so I guess we're, well, does anybody have any questions? That's the first thing. Be sure you can privately message Georgie or you can just type in the chat. Um, as we get to the next one, you can um, get you some water. Liza, Lana, y'all got your water, juice, tea. Yes, so get your water, get your water, get your snacks, everything. Um, once again, like Michelle has said before, if you need to ground yourself, ground yourself. Thank you for that that yes, grounding that we did, that breathing exercises. Thank you for the, the bowl. We need all of that. Um, so yeah. We need Zen. Yes, we need Zen. But Thank any you all. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you Georgie can make um, Michelle the host again. Yes. Thank so, you. So um, let me... Georgie, what an amazing presentation. We want to just tell everybody, thank you so much for continuing to stay with us this evening as we move through this incredible first day of the Safe Bay 
um, Consent Summit. We love that you are all here. I want to give a big shout out to our presenters who are doing such an amazing job uh, and being here. Um, Liza and Ms. Z have really, really held us down. Alana, I see you're in the house and you're going to help us out because you're on the West Coast. So you're taking kind of the night shift. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to remind you to make sure you are following Safe Bay on all social media, which is at underscore Safe Bay. And remember that Community X is our official tech partner. Community X is the new social network for social good and will be launching next month. Community X is built by change makers for change makers like everybody here on this call. And we are asking you in preparation for their launch to go and vote for the cause areas we've talked about today. We've talked about mental health. We've talked about inclusion. We've talked about comprehensive sex ed. And we have talked about ways to create more access to um, resources for survivors. So make sure you go to www.communityx.tech and vote for the cause areas you care about. And in that referral code, we need you to go ahead and put Safe Bay in there. We also wanna give a big shout out to Shayel. We know you're in the house, Shayel, and we wanna thank you so much for the hard work you've put in. I don't wanna get emotional because I know how hard Shayel works to bring us all these resources and to really provide a space for young people to be able to learn to grow and I am emotional. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all because today has been an emotional day, honey. I had the camera off because I was like, oh Lord, there was some heavy things. But <clears throat> um, I am going to, at this moment, I have to turn off the recording and then I'm gonna start it again. But Shayel, talk to us about this panty uh, uh, promo we have going here at Safe Bay. Here, 